Hello everyone, this is Nitpicky Nerd and this is my review of the last uh, three episodes of season one of Star Trek Prodigy. Visually the show is really good, but uh, story-wise it's not really that interesting. Also, I'm not a huge fan of Janeway, so seeing Admiral Janeway in the show didn't really do anything for me. I did like the attention to detail to the fact that she now only drinks uh, tea and not coffee which fits what we saw in the last episode of Voyager in the future segments when she said she only drinks tea now. They explain it here that it was doctor's orders to stop uh, drinking coffee so much. And also this whole excuse of why they cannot bring their starship back to Starfleet because it has some kind of secret weapon from the future which will somehow infect and destroy Starfleet. And that's why they cannot get the ship to Starfleet and so they have to be on their own. It all seems like kind of a lazy plot device like a contrived excuse for why they cannot go back to Federation space so that they can remain their own team with their own starship despite being kids. And there was a funny reference to a scene from TNG when some guy called Wesley a melanoid slime worm and now it's revealed that Murph is actually a melanoid slime worm which doesn't really contradict anything else, it's not any kind of problem with anything else so I have no problem with it being connected uh, to Murph and also interestingly and also in the very end of the season they showed that Murph uh, transformed into a cocoon so I'm guessing it's going to turn into a different kind of creature. And uh, episode 12 was about them meeting a Borg cube and I think visually all of that was great. I loved it visually but story wise it's the old problem of making the Borg seem weak and pathetic more and more in every single appearance. So you know it's been a problem even back in TNG. They were only really scary in their first appearance Q-Who and later in uh, the best of both worlds when they were actually attacking the Federation and easily destroying all their defenses and all of that. So that's the only time they were actually scary. And after that, uh, even when they defeated them using Locutus, because Data easily hacked into them and made them fall asleep and blow up, that was already kind of too easy. And after that, in every single appearance, the Borg became weaker and weaker and in Voyager it became a total joke when they were easily defeating multiple Borg cubes without problem and in Star Trek Picard the Borg were basically the victims of the Romulans being abused by Romulans and then in season 2 of Picard the Borg Queen was more like a comic relief character and she became good in the end apparently and so with each appearance the Borg become less and less scary and in this show they are now defeated by a group of kids who didn't even know anything about them at first and so it's uh, the same old problem of uh, taking a once great villain and making them look weak and it's a shame because it's a waste of a good potential the Borg could have been and should have been a really creepy and scary big villain and yet they're always easily defeated and so they're not really scary anymore and the only episode I actually really enjoyed was the final episode of the season called All the World's a Stage in which they go down to a planet and we see people who are kind of playing dress up to look like Starfleet officers and they all talk like with a Shatner impression and with names similar to the TOS characters and it's like they're all playing imitations of the Enterprise crew from the original series. And it's all because uh, some Starfleet officer from uh, the time of TOS crash landed on the planet and told them all about the Enterprise and Kirk and all of that. And they all imitated that and became like uh, super fans of Starfleet, which they call Starflight. And it's also funny how they kind of get some of the names wrong. It's all kind of distorted. And so it's similar, but not exactly the same. So I thought all of that part of it was really funny. It reminds me of the original concept of that Deep Space Nine episode when they wanted to make a homage to TOS, which eventually became that episode when they go back in time to the time of TOS, uh, into the episode with the Tribbles and all of that. So. The original idea was that episode was not about uh, time travel but instead revisiting one of the planets from TOS which the Enterprise visited and they will discover that everyone on the planet are imitating the original TOS crew. It was supposed to be that same planet with the gangsters in which that society imitated everything from that book about gangsters from Earth and that's why they all looked and behaved like in that book and so the idea was that a century later they would all be imitating Kirk and Spock from the time that they were on that planet so when the Deep Space Nine crew would meet them it would be like meeting a whole society of basically Trekkies, uh, all people who are dressed up as the TOS characters and so that was a funny idea which didn't end up happening so they kind of used the same idea here. It's also similar to the idea in the movie Galaxy Quest which had those aliens who picked up what they thought were historical documents and it was actually the show Galaxy Quest which they became huge fans of 
and they made their whole society based on those historical documents and they were imitating it and so they were basically like uh, Trekkies who think the show is real and they worship it and so they build that starship for real and all of that so we have something really similar in this episode with these aliens who also made their whole society based on the stories of that red shirt who crashed on their planet and told them all about it and then died because he was a red shirt so first he died and they even built their city to look like a starship and they all dress in similar outfits and they name each other similar names as the TOS crew and the Shatner impression was really funny the way they all talk kind of uh, with pauses between words and all of that so all of that stuff was really entertaining really funny in my opinion and also it was just a cute story and also uh, they have that tale about some creature who lives uh, in the forest which is dangerous and it has two red glowing eyes and all of that and in the end it's revealed that it's the shuttle Galileo and uh, the red eyes were actually its uh, engines, its nacelles which were glowing from a distance looking like eyes and so that was a really cute idea that felt like in the spirit of the old shows you know often some primitive civilizations would misunderstand something and invent stories on that so it has all those classic Star Trek elements and it's all comedic it's all really funny and it has the Star Trek spirit the Star Trek message that you know those people are really nice and good not because they go and explore the stars but because of the way they seek to help others and all of that so I loved it I loved the message of it I loved the spirit of it I loved the comedy in this episode so this was probably my favorite episode of the whole show so far and uh, again maybe some of the kids watching wouldn't understand uh, some of this humor because if you are not familiar with TOS then you wouldn't get a lot of this comedy and also all the attention to detail how all the buttons and everything look like in TOS and even later when they let those people pilot their own ship they use the holographic projectors to make the controls uh, similar to TOS because that's what they're used to it doesn't make a lot of sense that they know how to pilot a starship and all of that but uh, because this was also entertaining I'm willing to forgive that and also this whole idea of using holograms to make different kind of controls for the user I think I suggested something similar in my reviews of Star Trek Picard when Picard had trouble piloting the ship because it had different kinds of controls to the ones he's used to and I remember saying why cannot he use the hologram to simply create the kind of controls that he does know how to use like what's the big deal about that and so in this episode of Prodigy they actually use that same idea they use uh, the holograms to create the kind of controls that these people are familiar with and then they are able to pilot the ship and that whole idea about uh, them fearing that creature who is uh, hiding in the mountain and it turns out to be that old shuttle and uh, the glowing two eyes were just its nacelles that's a brilliant idea that's a classic Star Trek material in my opinion so I really enjoyed this episode it's probably my favorite episode of the whole show so that's all I really have to say about it let me know what you think and we can discuss all of this in the comments below and I will see you all next time bye bye